Hi everyone! Tonight's video is on polysaccharides. I'm going to go through three common types of polysaccharides. There are others, but these are the most common. We'll talk about starch and glycogen and cellulose. These are all polymers of glucose, but they do have some differences. They differ in which organisms make them, the type of bond linking the monomer, and the monomer is always glucose, the overall shape, which organisms can digest them, and their function. So let's start with starch. Starch is a polymer of glucose, like all of our polysaccharides we'll be talking about tonight. And as you can see here, all of these glucose units are linked together to form this polymer. Starch is made by plants, but not all plants, just some plants. So corn and wheat and potatoes are classic examples of plants that make starch. These glucose polymers in starch are linked together by what's called an alpha glycosidic bond. It has a specific shape, and we always indicate that shape with this down, sort of a V shape with the oxygen in the middle. That's an alpha glycosidic bond. The alpha glycosidic bond gives the molecule a helical shape. So you can see here it grinding up like a curly Q. That's what starch looks like. The function of starch is energy storage for the plant. It has to be broken down into the individual glucoses to be used as an energy source. So I want you to remember the difference between energy storage and an energy source. An energy source can be directly burned to make energy. Energy storage has to be broken down into the energy source. Starch can be digested or broken down into individual glucose units by both plants and animals. Because both plants and animals have an enzyme with the correct shape to break down an alpha glycosidic bond. The next polysaccharide we'll talk about is glycogen. This is also a polymer of glucose. You can see our glucose, 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 glucose here. It is made by animals and it's only made in certain organs. So it's made in the muscle and in the liver. Glycogen also has these alpha glycosidic linkages, again, indicated by this down kind of, this one looks a little bit more like a U, but you can see it's all going the same direction with the oxygen in the middle. This alpha glycosidic bond gives the molecule a helical shape similar to starch. However, it differs from starch in that it is very branched. Starch would just have one long helix. Glycogen has helixes branched off of the original helix. The function is energy storage, much like starch, but it's energy storage for the animal. And again, it's only made in the muscle and the liver. Glycogen has to be broken down into individual glucose units to be used as an energy source. source. So again, pointing out the difference between energy storage and an energy source. Glycogen can be digested by animals because they have an enzyme that recognizes the shape of the alpha glycosidic bond. The last polysaccharide we'll talk about is cellulose. Fun fact, cellulose is the most abundant organic compound on Earth. It is, of course, a polymer of glucose, as are all of the polysaccharides we're talking about tonight. So again, you can see the glucose, 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 glucose here in my polysaccharide. However, the bond shape is different. You can see one bond has the oxygen going up and the next has the oxygen going down. This is indicative of a beta glycosidic bond. And that beta glycosidic bond gives the whole molecule this linear shape. So cellulose is not helical like starch and glycogen. It's very linear. It's made by plants. And you can see here our linear cellulose strands with our beta glycosidic bonds with the up, down, and up. These all link together to form multiple strands, which then eventually bundle together to form the cell wall. Plants have walls around their cells and they're formed by strings of this cellulose polysaccharide. Cellulose cannot be digested by either plants or animals because neither plants nor animals have an enzyme that recognizes the shape of this beta glycosidic bond. And that's really handy. You don't want a plant to be digesting its own walls. You want the walls to keep standing. So the fact that it's not digestible like the, the organism that makes it suits its function. Again, it can't be digested. Cellulose can't be digested by plants or animals because they don't have an enzyme that recognizes the shape of the beta glycosidic bond. 
But you might be saying, wait a minute, what about cows? Cows eat grass and grass is a plant, so it has cellulose. Well, it turns out that no, cows cannot break down cellulose, but they have bacteria in their stomach that do have an enzyme that recognizes the shape of that beta glycosidic bond. So the cow eats the grass and then the bacteria in the stomach break down the cellulose into the glucose units so that the cow gets the energy source. So the cow and the bacteria have what we call a mutualistic relationship where they each benefit from this arrangement. So if we can't digest the cellulose that's in plants, why is everyone always telling you to eat your vegetables and your fruit? That's because the cellulose is actually a form of fiber. The fiber in your diet cannot be digested, but it actually helps move things through your digestive tract. It helps you eliminate waste. In a nutshell, it helps you poop. So if you eat a lot of fiber, it helps things keep moving through your digestive tract because it is non-digestible. So you should know the three common types of polysaccharides. You should know that they are all polymers of glucose. You should know what organisms make them and what organisms can digest them for each of these polysaccharides. You should know what type of bond links the monomers. You should know the overall molecule shape and you should know the function of each of these polysaccharides. So that's all for tonight.